After meticulous planning and loads of preparation, the instruments are ready. The lights are focused. Introducing the Covington Surgery Center, a state-of-the-art outpatient surgical facility right in your own backyard. St. Tammany Parish Hospital, world-class healthcare close to home. Hello and welcome to Healthy Living, brought to you by St. Tammany Parish Hospital. I'm your host, Christian Moises. The weather is finally getting better, which means warm weather is going to be here before we know it. It's actually already here, and we can all enjoy getting outside again. Uh, with summer approaching, beach trips, pool days, being out in the yard are going to become more and more commonplace, but always remember to wear your sunscreen. And the reason I say that is because May is National Skin Cancer Awareness Month. And you may be surprised to learn that skin cancer actually outnumbers all other forms of cancer combined. To talk about what you need to do to protect yourself and see any kind of risk factors or early signs of skin cancer, we have Dr. Nicholas Viviano from the Dermatology Clinic of Mandeville here today. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about your practice and a little bit about what you do as a dermatologist. Okay. Uh, well, uh, I've been practicing in Mandeville for about 30 years. Uh, went to Tulane LSU, board certified, which means it's a three-year program, and then we take a certifying exam. Uh, and um, what we basically do is skin. We do skin surgery. We do uh, uh, some cosmetics. We do uh, everyday rashes, acne, you know, just the, the whole gamut. And uh, jumping right into the conversation, let's talk about skin cancer. Okay. There are a lot of things out there, and like I mentioned, it's, it's the number one cancer. It, it beats all other cancers combined. Right, right. And uh, this is uh, extremely important in our practice, most probably one of the most important things that we deal with. Uh, we live in the South. We have a large population that is susceptible. Uh, that population would tend to be uh, fair-skinned individuals, uh, uh, maybe of uh, Celtic or Northern European extraction. Uh, and uh, we like to have a good time, so we're outside all the time. We do, and you know, that one of the things I was going to talk about, everybody wants that beautiful tan. Right. And, uh, you know, what, we'll just go ahead and start there, maybe. What are, what's a safe way, or is there a safe way that you can go out and get that tan? Well, honestly, uh, it comes in a bottle, <laughs> okay? Uh, we have uh, some of these products that uh, will literally self-tan you. Uh, and um, as far as I'm concerned, they're perfectly safe. Um, you, you have to remember, tanning is a natural defense against something that is not good. Mother Nature does not spend time or effort or energy on something that is uh, not worthwhile. So for her to develop a tan, I mean for you to develop a tan or a person to develop a tan, Mother Nature has to uh, basically energize herself and expend that energy. That tan is a protective mechanism against something that is not good for you. And we get it a couple of different ways. Number one, naturally, uh, ultraviolet light response from the sunlight, natural sunlight, uh, but also tanning parlors, okay, uh, or a tanning bed. Uh, both of those can be injurious to your skin and in essence, you, you can have big problems, especially as time goes on. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, th there is a safe tan, and some of the products that they have now are very, very good, uh, but uh, the natural tan, uh, I would not try to get one, per se. That's interesting, because to hear that a tan actually is not 
necessarily a good thing. No. Uh, we talk a lot about sunscreen. Everybody's right. all about sunscreen, and I've right. heard about you know the highest number really that's any benef- that has any benefit is up to 50. You get all these at 75, 100. Really doesn't make that much of a difference at, at some point. Uh, but sunscreen really isn't just for the beach. I've heard that you know if you're driving long distances to work or if you're on a road trip, exactly, you want to slather some on your arm that's you know in in the window and uh, exactly. Uh, people don't realize, but you get uh, sun exposure, sun damage, and a lot of times you don't even realize you're getting it. Uh, there was a recent piece on a recent television station uh, about the commuters from the North Shore, and this is of particular interest to the people over here. Uh, uh, when you're going to the South Shore, the sun's coming in the driver's window. When you're coming back home, the sun is coming in the driver's window. And so, in essence, if you figure you're going the speed limit, that's a half an hour at least a day each way. You're looking at an hour's worth of damage times five, times a month, times a year. Even realizing and it. you don't even realize it, okay? And that brings up an important thing. Uh, when we see patients, I'm always more suspicious of lesions on the left side, uh, more so than the right side, because that's where we get more damage. Right. So, um, yeah, it's extremely important. Now, the use of sunscreens. Uh, number one, you want to, you really want to get one that has a good rating. Let's talk about the numbers real quick. An SPF of 30 is what we dermatologists recommend uh, as most probably the minimum and most probably sufficient. To go from a 30 to a 50, let's say 30 to a 60, you would say, oh, I'm getting twice the, the protection. No. You're only getting about a percentage or two of protection oh. extra, okay? So it, that's not really a 30 is, is sufficient. You're most probably getting 96 to 97 percent. Um, protection and if you go up another percentage point it's not going to make that much difference so number is important you know 30 or above uh, but you don't have to go to a hundred or three thousand or whatever uh, the second thing uh, you want one that's gonna stick so it doesn't do any good to put on a 50 and then an hour later you don't have any protection exactly so we look for water resistance because usually you're gonna you're gonna be doing some activity outside and in our heat and humidity, you're sweating, you're, you're, you might be swimming, you might be working or whatever. So you don't want protection for an hour. You want protection for the whole time you're out right. there. And I believe the, the good rule of thumb is reapply, I want to say, every two hours? Well, read the labels because they, they have different things. Some of them, the FDA about a year and a half, two years ago, just went and revisited this and there was all new labeling. So read the label and whatever the label recommends. But I would look for a water resistant one. They can't say waterproof anymore, but water resistant, which means it's going to stick. Uh, third thing, okay. You need something that has broad coverage, okay? UVB, which is where we get most of the tanning uh, um, thing. Um, um, the color and whatnot. Yeah, right, right. Uh, response. Uh, but UVA also, so you need a good broad spectrum coverage. And then third, uh, fourthly, you need something that's going to be cosmetically elegant. <laughs> you know, I had a guy in yesterday, he says, you know, I, I tried this and I put it on and it was like, it was like I was a geisha girl, you know? <laughs> So he's most probably not going to use that again. But if he uh, recommended one to him that he'll put on, and he'll most probably use it every day. Right. And the good sunscreens, of course, will have all that information on the labels. Exactly. So make sure to look for those things. Or speak to your dermatologist, or and he'll be glad to recommend the proper one. The only other question I have real quick about sunscreen before we start talking about sure. the actual lesions and, and what to right. look for. Um, with sunscreens, the big thing now is spray, spray um, sunscreen over a lotion. Is there a difference? Uh, well, I prefer the lotions, but, you know, when you have young children and, you, you know, to get them to sit still or whatever, you want to get it on them. Uh, just as long as it has those qualities we were talking about, uh, I'm okay with it. Okay. Well, we've given people the tools of kind of how to protect yourself. Right. And, of course, we could talk for hours on that. Right. Let's talk more about what to look for once that damage has already taken sure. place. Sure. And I know that there are several types of skin cancer that you really focus on. Okay. Uh, okay. You can kind of give us a broad overview of that. Well, generally speaking, there are three major types of skin cancer. Uh, basal cell carcinoma, which is the most common type that we see. Uh, the good thing is it tends to be uh, less aggressive. 
meaning that it doesn't cause as much a dam as much damage, even though it can cause a lot of damage. Uh, it is uh, about eight times more common than the next one, which is squamous cell carcinoma. Squamous cell can be more aggressive. Uh, it uh, it tends to uh, want to go deeper and get involved in more more structures that you don't want to have to deal with. Both of those are related to sun exposure and sun damage, okay? So you're going to tend to see these on sun-exposed areas. Different for men and women, which is an important uh, thing to note. Men, face, ears, balding scalp, okay? Right. Occasionally chest because they'll take their shirts off. Uh, women, most probably, again, the face, not as much ears because of the hair, mm -hmm. not as much scalp. Um, V of the neck, okay, that's a very important one. Maybe a little bit on the shoulders and legs because women wear right. their, with their exposed legs. Okay. Which is why it's always important, wear your hats, be under the umbrella at the beach. And wear your sunscreen. To, wear your sunscreen and try to stay out of the sun as much as possible. Right. Now, most probably the most worrisome and the, the worst of all the skin cancers, but of course, good, thank goodness, it's the least common, is malignant melanoma. Malignant melanoma arises out of a pre-existing mole, okay? Uh, we develop moles up until about the age of 24, 25. Now, I have a lot of people come in, uh, in their 50s, 60s, 70s, say, oh, doc, I, I have a, a whole bunch of new moles on my back, okay? And I say, well, how long have you been here? Oh, about five, 10 years. Well, those usually aren't moles, okay? Those are other things that we get as we get older. But arises out of a pre-existing mole, uh, where uh, there are certain types of moles that are a little bit more susceptible, such as one that we call a congenital mole. Congenital mole is one that you're born with. And uh, most mothers will look their kids over when they're born and will know, hey, we got a little problem here. Right. So I would always have those checked out. And as a matter of fact, if somebody comes in with a congenital mole, it goes, okay? Right. Because that is a substantial precursor, most probably a seven to 10 times greater chance that that mole will turn into a melanoma than others. But in general, we look, we look at the mole and we determine what sort of characteristics. So if someone comes in and says, look, I've got these moles, let me check out. We're looking for certain characteristics that will eventually go into you know, when you're ready. I don't know, basal cells, the main one that you were talking about, right. that's what you mostly see. We have a great, uh, a great image to show actually our viewers today of kind of what to look for. So if you can kind of help us walk through that, okay. uh, kind of point out what to look for. Um, you know, well, on, on the screen we have these 10 images. So right. the, uh, when we speak of basal cell, there are many subtypes, okay? But the most common type would be number five, which is at the top in the center here, which has this roll border and uh, ulcerated center. Yeah, again, this is usually going to be in a sun-exposed area, but that is that would be the classic basal cell. Okay. Uh, the one to the right of it uh, is what we call a pigmented basal cell. It looks like a mole, so somebody might say, "Oh, you need to take a look at this mole," but it's really a basal cell. Okay, right. so that occasionally happens. Uh, sometimes uh, all the way to the left is this figure one. Figure one, yeah. Um, this ulceration here, uh, that's a basal cell here, but that's the way a lot of times the second type looks. Uh, squamous cell, they'll look like an ulcer. As a matter of fact, uh, one of the descriptions is a rodent ulcer, okay? So that's what the second type looks like. The most important thing is if you're suspicious, if this is my rule of thumb, I tell my patients if you wind up with a new bump on a sun exposed area, or a sore that doesn't heal up or go away in six weeks. Six weeks is the magic time, okay? Doesn't go away in six weeks, go see your dermatologist. And make sure you see a board certified dermatologist because that assures you that that person has been properly trained and can uh, tell you the right answer. Right. Uh, as we get close to wrapping up, um, one thing I wanted to ask though is, uh, and I'm just curious, is it just sun exposure that can lead to skin cancer or are there other factors uh, outside of sun? Uh, well, uh, uh, most probably it's 97% sun. Well, sun and again, ultraviolet light protection, I mean, ultraviolet light exposure in general. We get ultraviolet light in other ways. 
and most probably the most common way nowadays is tanning beds. Right. And, and that is absolutely, you, you don't want to go there. And that not only will increase your chances for the first two based on squamous cell, but it also increases the risk for malignant melanoma, mm -hmm. which will kill you. And by the way, malignant melanoma is the one that will kill you, okay? The other two types will tend to, as I say, eat away at things. Uh, but but malignant melanoma is fatal if it's not taken care of properly. And just to give people an idea, how common is that uh, on the North Shore, malignant melanoma? Uh, well, uh, in a typical year uh, of seeing uh, you know a few thousand patients, I may see two or three. Okay. So it's not that common. However, most probably it's the most it's the most uh, important that we deal with because it's deadly. Uh, so that's that's the deal. As far as treatment, mm -hmm. we can speak about that a little bit. Absolutely. The basal cell, squamous cell, are usually easily remedied with uh, surgery, usually on an outpatient basis in an office, okay? Uh, malignant melanoma can also be handled that way, but there may be some other uh, internal uh, aspects that you have to deal with. But uh, uh, simple surgery, so people don't need to be afraid. Right. Don't worry about <laughs> it. But come in as soon as possible because we can do a lot more, a lot better, with the least amount of scarring and everything if you come and address it early. One other thing I'd like to mention because people hear about Mohs surgery. Generally speaking, when we do surgery, we do what I call slow Mohs. I will remove it. We mark it, we send it to the lab, they will look at it, they'll tell me, look, at 12 o'clock you have a little bit, at 10 o'clock you have a little bit, and go back and do that. Most surgery, the, the big difference is you do that in the office, they go in the other room, and it's back and forth, back and forth until they get it, remove it all. We do, I use most surgery, I don't do it, but I use it, I'll send people off for specialized things where we're really trying to conserve tissue. Right. But that's, most of the, that's mostly what we deal with as far as treatment. Well, Dr. Viviano, I appreciate it. The big thing you keep saying is early detection is the key. Make sure early you detection. get in if you and see prevention. something that's questionable. And it uh, plays right well into our next guest who's going to be talking about the screenings that we offer throughout the parish. So, Excellent. Dr. Viviano, I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. When we return, we'll be here with Charity Gay from Mary Bar Park and Cancer Center to talk about those screenings and what you can do to protect yourself even further. For the best possible results, how far would you travel? Would you take an international flight to find a hospital that ranked among the very best in the world for the treatment of heart attacks? For the best possible results in nine cardiac care measures, just how far would you go? St. Tammany Parish Hospital, world-class health care, close to home. Welcome back to Healthy Living, brought to you by St. Tammany Parish Hospital. We're talking all about National Skin Cancer Awareness Month and we got some great information and helpful, hi helpful tips on how to stay protected in the sun from Dr. Nicholas Viviano. We're now joined by Charity Gay, Early Detection and Education Specialist with Mary Bar Park and Cancer Center. Uh, Charity, we always love having you on the show and you always give us some great information on how people in the community uh, can get some advanced screenings and I know we have some coming up. Right, we do. Um, we, of course, have a mobile medical clinic, and that mobile clinic travels to locations here in St. Tammany and Washington Parish. And um, with May being National Skin Cancer Awareness Month, that will be our focus this month. Um, we have f four specific skin cancer screenings coming up. We will be in Bugalusa on May 9th. Um, we will be in Covington on May 15th. On May 17th, we'll be in Lacombe. And then on May 29th, we do a larger screening, and we do one in the evening to where those that work and can't come to our normal mm -hmm. scheduled times that are usually about 12.30 to 3.30 during the day, um, they can come when they get off. So that one runs from 5.30 to 7, and it'll be um, at Mary Bird Perkins at St. Tammany Parish Hospital in our clinic downstairs. And what do people... Walk me kind of through a screening. What do people experience when they go to a screening? Absolutely. Um, well, of course, we offer five types. Uh, we do breast, prostate, oral, skin, and colon. Um, so each one is, of course, a little bit different. We have physicians present that are doing the screening. We have a nurse that is there. So we have a navigator who will always um, help you and follow up with you if you have an abnormal finding that we're concerned about. Because we want to make sure that, you know, you took that first step and you came to get screened, but we want to make sure that you're going to get the follow-up afterwards. Exactly. And that's such an important part of a screening program. Um, so we have the 
the nurse and the physician there. Um, I'm usually there as well, um, making sure everything's running like it should. Um, at a skin screening, the dermatologist will be there with us. Um, you'll come in, you'll fill out a little bit of paperwork just because we want to know a little bit about your health, your history. Um, you know, melanoma is is typically linked to, uh, there's a genetic link there. So we want to know if you have a family history. Um, we want to know how you protect your skin. Have you been screened before? Have you had any issues before? And that really helps the dermatologist um, who's screening you make the proper assessment as right. well. So once we get all of that information, you'll go in a room um, and it's up to you. It's, it's your comfort level. You know, we'll, we will offer you a head to toe screening. The doctor can look at you from head to toe. Or if you have one specific thing that you're concerned about that may have popped up last week and you just don't know what it is or a mole that has maybe right. changed in size or the colors not looking right um, the the border is not smooth it's kind of ragged you know different things that we tell people to watch for so um, some people will come in and, and say you know I'd like you to look at everything especially my my sun exposed areas um, behind the neck behind the ears the face the arms and if the doctor sees something we're concerned about she'll let you know that she wants you to follow up with that right. uh, we assess the patient at that point to determine if they have insurance if they not or if they don't and that helps us um, in making a referral of where we can send them next to get the proper care that they need because of that abnormal finding. And I was going to say, this is open to the entire community. Any, Absolutely. Anybody can come get this. Absolutely. Um, and it's important to remember, too, you know, while this is great information and it's, it's a great early detection, it doesn't replace going to your physician. No. It's, it's the first step in determining if there's something that needs to be discovered or, or looked into further. Correct. And one other thing that, you know, we tell people that is so important is you're with your skin every day. Mm -hmm. So it's so important when you're at home that you look and, and you be aware Right. of what's there and what's new or what's changing um, because you're your first line of defense you know say, dr. Viviana hit on that a little bit you know uh, the big push with with mammograms is self exams of course to Correct. teach people how to do that same thing with skin that's why we showed those images is because we want people to know you know what to look for and if there's right. any kind of abnormality make sure you get out there get it checked out exactly and follow the proper course exactly. of action and there's you know there's great websites that you can look up American Cancer Society has a website um, that you can go to and there's images on there as well if you want to see those images again um, we have tons of information and pamphlets and booklets that we hand out at all of our education events we have them with us at screenings right. even if you want to stop by and just get some information because you want to share it with a family member that you're concerned about um, we also have pamphlets brochures and information on uh, tanning beds right. and the harms of tanning beds um, one, one of the things that you know we've learned recently is there's a stronger link to melanoma when you begin using tannin beds before the age of 30. Mm -hmm. And so many people have the misconception that a tannin bed is a better option than laying out in the sun. And that's it's simply really not option. true. <laughs> right. It's a worse option for you and it's simply not true. So that that's one of the biggest myths that we're constantly battling every day, especially right. in the younger generation. Not to mention it's a more expensive way of tanning. If, exactly. You know, you might as well just go out to the beach or lay out in the backyard if you, right. you want to do that. Let's not do either. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, what are some of the common questions that you get when you work with people in the community at these screenings what what are people most concerned about um, there's a misconception that African Americans do not get skin cancer we get a lot of that um, and of course that's also not true um, we've diagnosed melanomas on our bus right. um, um, so that that's one question we get we get a lot of questions about children too you know when should I start putting sunscreen on my child how much what mm -hmm. what SPF should I use and <clears throat> we tell them you know make sure you're using a broad spectrum uh, sunscreen you want to cover the um, UAV and the UAB um, UVA and UAB and to, uh, at least a 30 a right. 30 SPF uh, you want to put about on an adult it's about an ounce which is about a, a shot glass mm -hmm. full of sunscreen over your body and the important thing to remember with children is you want to also protect them because right their skin is sensitive and um, you know we want to protect them at a younger age to give them a healthy mm -hmm. a healthy start for getting as an adult um, and it's it's teaching them too it's teaching them the importance of protecting your skin um, another good thing to remember with children is you want we, we, you want to reapply you want right. to reapply about every two hours um, children sweat children run around children jump in the water and out the water and in the water and out the water and not just for children I have a hard time doing that right. when I go to the beach you know it'll <laughs> 
we'll eat lunch and then it'll be two o'clock before I realize I gotta I gotta reapply. Exactly. You, just, you put it on and you think it's gonna be there all day and it's it's not. So right, right. And you know, even when you're not even not at the beach, you know, this morning, for instance, I put sunscreen on my daughter because mm -hmm. she's going to school this morning and I know they're outside playing. Right. So it's it's can it's a good it's a good thing to start doing just as an everyday routine and every everyday activity and, and starting them younger and doing it is is a great way it's a great lesson to teach your children. Right. We were talking earlier about uh, the treatments that are available. I, ha I hesitate to say it's a fortunate thing that we don't see a lot of serious cases of skin cancer, but we still do see it. And Mary Bird Perkin, of course, the Cancer Center is a great resource uh, for when you get referred. Um, tell me a little bit about you know some of the treatment options that are available there and, and maybe the prevalence of it. Absolutely. Um, well, we at Mary Bird Perkins at St. Tammany Parish Hospital have radiation oncologists as well as medical oncologists there. So depending upon the type of skin cancer, the type of treatment that's needed, um, many times surgery comes into play as mm -hmm. well with, um, with skin cancer, which a lot of times it can be done by a dermatologist. So when they're coming to us, it's a little further along. Um, it's something that we need to treat, you know, um, in addition to a surgery. Right. So um, when you get there, you know, our physicians are going to look at your case and we're going to do what's best for you. And um, like I said, that could, be, that could be on our medical oncology right. side, that could be our radiation oncology side. Um, we, we just want to do what's best. Case by case. Mm -hmm. Well, Charity, thanks so much for being here. Absolutely. We always love having you. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next time. They're the movers and the shakers. They're the ones who change our world. And they deserve places designed especially for them. Built with kids' specific needs in mind. The latest technology in the caring hands of our dedicated pediatric specialists and primary care physicians. Helping kids feel like kids. St. Tammany Parish Hospital. World-class health care for children close to home.